Now we're showing you the installation of a rear main seal, the rope type seal, on a Holden V8. You saw Shane pound a few dimples into that seal surface area in the block for obvious reasons. It's designed to prevent the seal walking around. He uses some GM sealant below the seal. Once again to retain it. He's had a seal sitting in engine oil for a long time. You can have it sitting there overnight, for a day, for whatever. It's to free the seal up. They tend to be very, very hard. Pretty obvious what he's doing, he's pounding it into place. He'll wipe the excess off, the oil. He'll use a mandrel that's similar to the size, similar to the size of the crank seal surface area. We have a jig that we made um, to locate the seal firmly and evenly down in position. You don't really need this, but it just, it just helps us. You know, it helps us line it up and uh, from a production point of view, if you're doing them every day, it just makes life a lot easier. Holds the seal while he cuts it and trims it to size. He's trying to cut it as flush as practicable to the block cap register surface area. I mean, instead of this fixture, you could have a friend helping, holding a cylindrical object next to it. The, the name of the game is not to let the seal slip up and out of position while you're trimming it. Shane's just holding the rear main cap. He's installed the seal in exactly the same way as he's installed the seal half in the block. He's trimmed this seal, leaving it slightly proud. If you have a look, you can see it's just poking above by a mill approximately or a touch more. That's to provide some crush on the seal in the block. And You can see that we've made a mandrel, which is the same size as the, basically as the crank seal area. Um, he'll torque the cap up to crush it and position the seal as firmly in both halves, in other words in the block half as well as the cap half as possible. James crushed, crushed the seal in place with our little mandrel adapter. You won't have a mandrel adapter, so we'll be putting the crank in and doing the same thing, just to crush the seal down and position it. You don't have to tension it with a torque wrench, just do it up nice and firmly. Um, sometimes the seal won't go down. You know what that means. That means you've got to do this process a number of times. 
And even though it's long-winded and it takes some time, you haven't got a choice. Otherwise, your seal's going to leak. The worst thing is having to pull engines apart with leaking seals. So put the crank in and out a few times, tighten it up. And ours, in this instance, did work, fortunately, and we positioned the seal in one go. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes you can spend an hour on the bloody thing. You can see Shane's just trimming the excess away from the parting face. You need to do the same thing. Shane's put our mandrel back in. In your case, you'll put the crank back in. He's pulled the tension back down on the uh, studs or bolts, whichever you're using. Shane will put a feeler gauge between the cap and the register. Notice, it's a two thou feeler gauge. It's very, very thin, and it's almost reached the surface. Obviously, you shouldn't be able to push any feeler gauges in there. So it's a matter of getting it to a position where the seal is crushed up enough so that you can't put a gauge in there. There's no point having the cap sitting on the register and wobbling around. Uh, Shane's taken the cap off a couple more times. He's crushed it down just to be on the safe side. You can see he's put a layer of molly grease all over the seal. This is just cam lube, the same stuff you use to assemble your ARP studs or uh, your camshaft lobes on a flat tappet cam. Plenty. No, you know, don't be skimpy. He's also crushed it up a few times, as I said, and he's done the same trimming. He's trimmed here, trimmed here, trimmed here, as well as trimming the excess right around the outside of the seal here. You want to prevent areas that will potentially create high spots which will cause leaks. He's going to drop the crank in. Put some more molly grease all over the seal half in the cap. He's taking some uh, three bond 1211 sealant, just a little dab on the parting face of the seal. You can use silicon, high temperature silicon, you know, oil impervious silicon. We've always used the three bond. It's not really critical what you use, just a little bit of sealer. The nuts go on, or bolts if you're not using a stud kit. basically it. This seal will not leak. When you first start this engine you'll get a little bit of the molly thrown out behind the crank flange. Don't worry, that's all that's coming out of it. The cranks uh, in place, in order to verify that the seal hasn't uh, constricted the movement of the crank too much, because we hear quite often from customers that, oh it was a bitch to turn over, etc, etc. Uh, you could actually use a torque wrench to check. You need a spec of no less than 10 foot-pounds, ideally around 20 foot-pounds, and a maximum of 25 foot-pounds resistance to turn. That's, you don't need more than that. Check it. It's not hard to do. One final thing about the rear main seal in a Holden V8. That's the one you need to use. It's an ACL HN022. I just want to show you something. I'm cutting the packet open. Um, 
one thing we always do, which you should do, take the seal out of the packet even before you put it in the oil bath. Move it around. It's very hard. Move it around and soften it up. All around, all over. Forget the shape that it was. A lot of people think, oh, you need to keep that shape because that's the shape it's going to conform to in the block. Forget it. This seal needs to be like a real piece of rope. It needs to be flexible, have movement. If you can't get it soft, put it in a vise and just move it around. You need to do that to both halves because the more flexible you make it, the more easily it'll conform to the block and the rear main cap and do the ends as well. They're very hard. We were lucky with the installation of this seal. Normally it takes anything, you know, up to a full hour of crank in, crank out, crank in, crank out, trim, push, you know. You're not always that lucky. But under no circumstances neglect the procedure that we've shown you because you won't have leaking. And that's as simple as it is. No one needs to pull apart engines, as I said previously. Um, that's about it.